So lastly, I'm going to crunch some uh, some chemistry looking uh, data. So if we look right here, you can see that there's some data that refers to concentration of something that seems to be going down. So that presumably is some uh, reactant which is producing and you can see that that's because, I say that because this concentration of whatever is disappearing. Um, so I want to plot this, I want time to be on the x-axis. So one of the first things I need to do is reposition this is reposition this this way. So if I wanted to graph this so there's my kind of standard uh, uh, 1 over uh, um, concentration versus uh, time and one of the things we do when we're calculating reaction rate orders and stuff, I'm just copying that, is one of the first things we do is we look at the uh, the logarithm uh, of the concentration and we uh, we plot that. So how do we do that again? We're going to take the uh, ln of this particular value right here and we're going to do that at idea again and again and again and this time we're going to take this data right here and control click and we're going to plot that. So we'll just say insert and there's our data for the logarithmic or the natural log of the concentration. And again we would go in and we'd gussy up these graphs but this is just for demonstration purposes. So another thing we do when we're trying to figure out uh, reaction orders is we take this very same data but then we also plot instead of plotting the ln of c we actually plot 1 over c so here I'm going to say 1 over c and I want this value here to be equal to 1 divided by whatever that value is there so I'm going to do that thing control paste I'm going to do that concept again and again and again notice that 1 over uh, 0.25 works out to 4 same thing we're going to click and drag and we're going to click and drag and this time we're going to plot that and that's what we get for our 1 over C and I'm thinking that's uh, so I'll compare that to any of my memorized uh, charts and graphs to see whether or not that fits and then the last thing we do when we're trying to figure out order just to double and triple check is we also correlate against what we would call the instantaneous rate okay now this is where it gets a little bit tricky so I'll go a little bit slow but before I do I think I've got um, where did that file go? Here it is here. Okay. So we're going to look at this file right, uh, this data right here. So what I'm looking for is the slope. I want my Excel to calculate the slope at this point right here. I want you to pay attention to the fact that this point is halfway between here and here, height wise, and this is halfway between here and here. So if I drop down and this is 15 and this is 5, that point lies on the 10 mark. More importantly, I get 10 by saying 15 minus 5, or actually better yet, it's halfway between the difference between there. Over here, whatever this value is right here, uh, it's not 15 minus 5, it's um, half of the distance between the two. So it's 15 minus 5, which is 10 divided by uh, 2, which is 5, and then I add that to here. That's kind of an unfortunate little coincidence. Over here I've got a number like 33.2. Uh, Up in here I've got 5.5, .5, so I'm going to take the distance between this, which is going to be, I don't know what that's going to be, uh, from 3.2 to 5.5 is going to be, what, 2.6, and half of 2.6 is 1.3, so from here I'm going to add 1.3, and I end up at 4.5. Now I'm going to show you the idea of calculating halfway in between and adding it over on the spreadsheet. And you can see it's sitting right in there. And again, that's a really terrible thing. It's not 15 minus 5. It's actually half the distance between the two. So watch how we do this sort of concept here where we find the middle of a curved point using our spreadsheet over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is move this over just a bit. 
And what I'd like is, I'd like another set of numbers that basically go halfway between here, halfway between here, halfway between here, halfway between here. Now you can manually figure that out and go 50, and then you can go, okay, halfway between 185 is, uh, or the other thing is you can just calculate it straight out on your spreadsheet. So actually I'll start right here, and what I want to do is I want to take this number minus this number, which I know is going to be 85, I want to cut that in half. It says 42.5 and I'm going to say F2 and I'm going to go to the very beginning here and I'm going to say I want it to be this number plus whatever that was and I'm going to bracket this appropriately. So what I should be doing is this should be 42 and a half added to 100 I should see 142 and a half and isn't that nice. So in here I want halfway in between again plus this. So watch me calculate. I'll do it uh, similarly but different. So in other words I'm going to say equals. I want this number and I want to add it to open bracket, open bracket again, this minus this divided by 2, close bracket, and I get a number halfway in between and I'm going to do it slow way again. First thing, I'll take the halfway point. So the halfway point is going to be this minus this. So that's the full distance divided by 2. And uh, while I'm at it, I want to add that to 270. So I'll F2 to edit it. I'm going to need to add another set of brackets around here. And then I'm going to add it to this number right here. I've bracketed it so it doesn't matter and I want to do that again and again and again and again and again and again and in fact if I copy this and paste it right there I should also see 50. Okay so what I've got now uh, what I've done is these are actually midpoint times so essentially these points right here are, if I can go back here, are all of these midpoints for these in-between period uh, moments. So again, for example, to find the midpoint between here and here, this is terrible. It's not uh, 15 minus 5. That just happens to be luck. What this is, this point right here is halfway between these two points plus this. So 15 minus 5 was 10 divided by 2 is 5. We went from here, we added 5. Over here, what would happen is we would say 20. If we wanted the midpoint in here, we would say 20 minus 15, which is 5, cut it in half, 2 and a half, and we'd go 2 and a half from here, which is 17 and a half. Same thing over here, up in this area, and across, sorry, across here and across here. So now I'm going to show you that in the case of concentration. So here's our concentration values. We're going to click and drag them back over to here. And now I'm going to calculate the corresponding midpoints for all of the concentration values. So how do we do that? Well, we need the halfway distance between here. So the halfway distance here is this minus this. Great, but I need to bracket that. So I'll bracket that and we need to cut that in half. And so we're going to have to take that and add it to this value right in here. So I'll F2, I'll bracket this, and I'll go to the beginning and bracket that again. I hate switching keyboards. Give me my old keyboard. I spilled coffee on it, but don't even get me started. Okay, plus this. Okay, let's try that again. Here we go. Equals, open bracket, this, minus this, close bracket, divided by 2. Should give me that. Great. Let's close these brackets here. Great. Now let's take this again and let's add it to this value right here. And we get that, which is halfway in between here. If we copy and paste that here, we should get a number 2.27 should be halfway in between here and again and again and again. And what I want you to see is that these are midpoint concentration values. 
So now if we take this, which is the midpoint of the times, and this, which is the midpoint of the concentrations, and plot these, then we should be off to the races. Nine minutes, wow, for this demo. Holy crow. Great, and we'll make it look like a graph paper. Same thing, having done this, let's go back and add our axes bearing in mind that this is this is still these are still time values but these are mid while well, they're still in seconds uh, these are midpoints I should probably say time midpoints you're kidding me why would you do that you know what forget it And this is concentration midpoints. So these are conch uh, midpoints. And this would be moles per liter. Right, so what we're looking at here is, uh, let's see, that's a table of first differences right here. Um, also a table of instantaneous changes in concentration. So in fact that's not concentrations, that's actually the change in concentration at any given time. Change, so that's the change in conch. There you go.